Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we're going to be creating a custom electric effect using the Niagara system that you can apply to characters, meshes, and other effects in your project. We're going to be building this entirely from scratch, including a custom texture for the electric effect itself. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any future content. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, we're actually going to uh, create a texture similar to this. This is one that I had just created for this effect. It doesn't have to be perfect, and we kind of want just some wavy electrical lines. Um, if you throw something like this together while you follow along this project, you can always go back and make the electric how you want it for your project later on and kind of improve on it. The idea is that we're going to be using sub UVs and we want four different sections that our uh, material is going to select randomly which one of these images it's going to be using. To make this, let's jump over to, I'm gonna use 3D Paint, but feel free to use whatever um, art app you want. I'm going to make this a, a square image. I'm going 1024 by 1024. We want this to be grayscale, so black background. And I'm just going to grab something like a pencil, real thin, and just kind of draw some wavy lines in here. It doesn't have to look perfect, especially uh, to just follow along for what we're doing. Um, after you get some wavy lines, I like to go back in with um, maybe a spray can in the gray, and we'll just do a light and kind of highlight behind it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, just doing this real quick. And once we get uh, this highlighting in here. I like to go back through with kind of this darker one again and do a little highlights a little further out. Just something like that. And then you can always go in and add a spark or two with just a real thin uh, pencil. Just do slight little sparks. This might be too much, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I just put a few of these in and then I want to save it down. Make sure you save as a PNG or something that you can import into your project. And I want to call this lightning test three. I've already made a couple of these. Go ahead and close that down and then import it into your project. And from here, I'm gonna make a material using this. So go ahead and make material and I'm gonna call this electric. And then open that up. To start with, we want to click our output and we're gonna change this to translucent and unlit. And then uh, for, we can do the emissive color first. We're gonna use emissive color and opacity for this. We're gonna use the particle color. And we're going to give ourselves a way to um, change this. So I wanna do a power, plug that into emissive color. And so instead of just setting this here, I'm going to use a dynamic uh, parameter. And we'll be able to set this in our Niagara effect. And since I know I'm using a couple, I like the UVs to be on the top. So I'm going to set the power to my third parameter. And I'm just going to call this emissive power. And that'll take care of the particle color for now. 
Uh, next, we're going to work on the opacity. And we're going to start with our texture sample and a radial gradient. This is going to be similar to how I've done some others in the past, but we're actually going to do quite a few uh, different things here to handle this. Um, come off of your red, and we're going to say multiply, and we're going to multiply this by the radial gradient. Uh, let's do real-time nodes so we can um, see this update as we get it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, lightning test three that I just created in here. And then from here, I'm going to do another power. We're going to use that same uh, dynamic parameter here. And I'm going to use the parameter four for this. And I'm just going to call this opacity power. It won't, it will directly affect the opacity, but we're actually going to run this through a couple uh, saturations and a fade. So from here, uh, pull out and do a saturate. And then we're going to multiply this by the particle color. Uh, but only the alpha of the particle color. So as the alpha changes, this is going to affect our opacity. Do saturate again. And then from here, although we probably won't have much of an issue with ours, I'm going to use a depth fade, which is a way to um, keep any lines uh, from showing off. It'll kind of fade um, as it goes out. Uh, we'll just, it's kind of for say, if we can always play with this as we, as we go, um, see if we can see any differences as we do this. If you see, it's kind of fading out here. Um, if you have any hard lines from where the, your UVs are crossing your sub UVs or, you know, something like that, this is a good way to kind of fix that problem. But for now, I'm just going to use it as, just to uh, fade a little more. And we're just going to leave that like that for now. And then off the back of this, we're going to use um, text cords and a panner. Plug that into my UV. And I want to grab another dynamic uh, parameter here. And then these are going to, the way this is going to work, usually if you have your speed here, you see panning. And since this isn't set, it's just every second it's changing um, this here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come off of here. And I'm just going to give this a value. And this will kind of make it set there where where we want it. Um, you can see. And we're still going to, if we change these, we still see some change over here. So this is actually going to work as our offset for our UVs, the way that I want to do this. So I'm going to say append and then I'm going to plug that in there and that in there and then I'm going to just name these um, u offset and then v offset And we'll be able to change all these in our Niagara system with this dynamic uh, parameter. Let's 
to go back through and so you can catch up and make sure I didn't miss out on anything here. And I think this is looking like I want it to. So let's go ahead and save that for now. And we'll leave this open in case we need to come make any changes. The next thing I'm gonna do is create my Niagara system. So right click Niagara system, and I'm just gonna use an empty one. And let's call this NS electric effects. Then open that up. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my emitter state to self and infinite. Uh, with this effect, we, we're actually gonna be able to do a lot of things with it, not just apply it to a mesh. So um, you might come back and need to change this if it's just a temporary loop, if something's being shocked or if it's uh, maybe applied to another Niagara system as like maybe background electricity or something. Uh, so you may have to come back and change quite a few of these things. I'm gonna add a spawn rate and a spawn burst. And again, there's some things you can always come back and change as needed. I'm actually going to do a spawn rate. Right now I'm gonna keep it kind of low, but once we apply it to our uh, character, we're gonna to have to increase it quite a bit. Let's do on our initialized particle, um, I'm going to do 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 is life. So it'll be a random between there. Uh, I'm going to leave the color alone for now. And then I'm going to, for the sprite size, do a random uniform. And this I'm going to do between 10 and 50. And then for the sprite rotation mode, I'm just going to set that to random. Next thing I'm going to do is add a shape location. And I want to, uh, for now, I'm just going to lower this to like maybe 50. And then for your particle update, or actually let's go ahead and change our sprite renderer so we can see what this is starting to look like. Let's change it to that electric material that we just created. So you see, we're starting to get our little pieces here. And then while we're, while we have this showing, let's also go to your uh, particle update and let's add that dynamic uh, material parameter so we can start changing these around. Uh, for now, let's go and see what that kind of looks like. If you, if you notice, we're getting our whole material at once showing here, which is not what we want. So we actually need to go to particle update and we're gonna add a sub UV animation. And in this, we're gonna do linear, do uh, click your start and end uh, check marks and do zero to three, we have four sections here. So uh, index is zero, one, two, and three. And then for our, we might need to mess with our offset a little bit. Um, if you have this warning, you need to set this to sprite renderer there. So let's go ahead and just keep working through this. We might need to change our offsets a bit, but we can always play with those uh, later as well. In your particle update, I'm gonna start adding 
uh, some of the things that we're going to use to control the size and color and things like that. So uh, let's start with sprite rotation rate. And I want to do uh, random range float between negative one and one. Let's do a scale sprite size. And I'm going to give this uh, the ease in here. That way they kind of get uh, bigger as time goes. Let's also give this a gravity. And the gravity we're going to give it, we don't want to necessarily go in up only we kind of want it to look like it's almost moving towards the screen and to do that we're going to in the z direction have it go some go down and some go up so i want to do negative 25 to 25 now they kind of look like they're exploding towards the screen as they get bigger some going up some going down let's do a curl noise And for this curl noise, um, I'm actually going to make this a pretty big curl noise. So maybe a thousand and five hundred for the frequency. And once we get this set up, you can always go back through and change a lot of these um, how you want them to be. Let's do color next. For the color, I'm going to do a uh, multiply linear color. I'm going to go ahead and instead of using this uh, color picker like this, I'm going to do a color from curve. And for this first one, just double click this little box. I'm going to set it to kind of this darker blue. And then as we go, if you double click, you can get another um little node to change the color at different areas so this one i want to set to kind of this teal and then this final one i want to do as teal as well and then down here let's change the opacity over time so double click on about this area and i'm going to go zero five there so it's about half capacity and then right towards here, maybe do uh, 0 0.25. And to make this more emissive, we have the scale color here. I'm going to multiply each of these sections by 100 just to give it some power, uh, emissive power. So now it looks a little more emissive. See what else I want in here. So that's looking kind of good right now. One thing we need to do is change because we're seeing all four of these at once, kind of like right in the middle. So we need to go uh, play with our maybe our UVs to uh, try to get this moved over in the right area. But if I go to this, get some in the area. That looks like it's trying to. It may not be fading enough as well um, over these areas. And I'm actually going to uh, let's set this back to where it was. Uh, for now, I want to put emissive back to where it's at, and we'll change that in a second. 
we're seeing that we have all four of these showing and this may be different on yours depending on what you set your scale to if you go to your sprite renderer and then sub uv we want to change the sub image size um, to something like uh, two and two and then we it kind of zooms in on just one of them uh, the way it works out so you might have to play with this number two depending on uh, the size of your texture um, you can try this true or false. And see what uh, look looks the best for yours. I think I'm just going to leave mine like that for now. And then we can go play with these to see if uh, this changes anything. Really doesn't look like it's going to make too big of a difference. But we're starting to see our individual uh, electric. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's just go back through these. I'll kind of click through them in case you need to check your um, details on mine. And actually, before we start, let me rename this uh, to electric in case we use it anywhere else so right now my spawn rate's really low just 50. Um, initialized particle we're just doing it in between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 and then random size between 10 and 50 and then random rotation mode um, sphere location just a 50 radius on that. Um, if you need to make any changes here or if it's doing anything, uh, one thing you can do, the emissive power and then opacity are two of the big ones you can uh, change here if you want. And kind of just make those look how you want. Right now, we'll leave it at one. And once we apply this to our character, we'll see if that's what we want it to look like. Uh, sub UVs, we're still going from index to zero. Linear indexes from zero to three. So that looks good. Make sure sprite renderer is selected there. Scale sprite size, we're starting small and going up. Um, with this, this also might be where we change it. Um, once it's on the character and you can play with this number uh, to change the scale any way you need right now again I'm just going to leave it at one and once we apply this to our character we'll uh, maybe change that again my gravity force is going negative 25 and up 25 in the z direction uh, got a lot of curl noise and then the color is the last real major piece that we have. And then if we play this, it's starting to look like electric signals jumping all over the place. And while this is playing, let's go um, look at some of these. Maybe do like that here. So the next thing I actually want to do is I want to set up this to work on my character's mesh. So let's say initialize mesh reproduction sprite. For this, I'm going to promote this to a, a user parameter, and I'm going to set this mesh over here. Uh, it's good to do this in case you have multiple characters in your game and you can call this when you pull off of this, you can set that user parameter based off of whatever mesh is there, but I'm gonna give it a basic one or a default uh, mesh. The one that I'm using in my as my third uh, person character is this Quinn Simple. So I'm gonna select that. And if you get the CPU access error, uh, make sure you hit fix now. And then, so we should be seeing this on the um, character here. 
one of the issues is once you apply it to a mesh, it might look a lot smaller. So if we go to the this and we jump this to 20, then we can actually see that a little better. And then we can also jump the spawn rate up. And maybe do something like a thousand for now. Just to see it on our character. So if we go to our third person character or whichever character you're going to use, make sure you set that mesh. If you don't know what mesh, uh, scalable mesh it is, you can go into its blueprint, click mesh, and then uh, this is the scalable mesh here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to apply this to this uh, character. So I'm gonna click on my mesh and I'm gonna say add, and I'm gonna do a Niagara particle system, or sorry, a, yeah, Niagara system here. And I'm gonna call this electric NS, and then just over in your details panel with the Niagara system uh, highlighted, just uh, make sure you select that electric FX there. And right now I'm just gonna keep this as auto activate. And then we can actually see this on our character here. So if I go play this in the world, we see the electric on our character. Uh, one problem with this, we can run around with it. Um, it's shooting it all over the place. And this may not be what you want, obviously. Um, so we're gonna do a couple other things here inside of our Niagara system. I'm also in the particle update, I'm going to add a um, update mesh reproduction sprite. This will update it as it as your character moves to make sure it's coming off of the um, limbs and everything correctly as it moves. And then I just, with that, I just uh, drug my user mesh over to it. And while we're in here, if we go play this now, you see it doesn't come off of the body, which could be what you want. Um, if you want it to come off, go to this overwrite intrinsic uh, variable and then uncheck that. And then when you go play it now, it comes off of you. One issue you might be noticing is it's shooting the sparks off all over the place. Uh, one way that you can fix this is if you go to your solve forces and velocity, just give this a speed limit, and um, I have this down to maybe like 250. And then it doesn't uh, shoot off as much. Now that that's working, there's some other things that we can do to kind of change this. Um, for instance, if we go to back to our dynamic uh, material parameters. Let's kind of make this a little lighter here. And a little more emissive. Maybe this looks more like electricity. I think that looks pretty good. And you can also change your spawn rate. Let's double it. If you don't like the way your electric looks, like I said, you can go and um, recreate this texture as much as you want, or if you find some online or something that you want and kind of uh, copy them over into these little areas. Uh, let's take the spawn rate down and see what that looks like. And then maybe that size is a little too much. So if we go back to the scale sprite size, we had it at 20, maybe we only want it to be 10. Just to get a little 
then while it's like that, let's go back up with our uh, spawn rate. And maybe on that scale sprite size, maybe uh, 15 is closer to what we want. I'm gonna set mine back to that 20. And another cool thing that we can do with this, um, and a lot of uh, effects right now, there's this electric dash and watching, uh, or kind of changing the way your character runs through the level uh, as far as like time dilation. So we can go into the event graph and let's do a off of, like an event begin play. This is where I just want to set this and I want to say set dilation. And if you set global time dilation, this affects everything in the game. So if you do 0 0.5, then everything moves half as half the speed. So your electric is coming off even slower as well. So that can give you some cool effects. And another thing you can do with this uh, selected, you can say set um, set custom time dilation. And this one affects just this blueprint. So if you want your uh, character or this blueprint, everything in it to move at the same speed as a normal, like normal game time, then you want these two to equal uh, one. So this would be multiplied by two. So now if you play that, your character will move at a normal speed while the electricity is still kind of lagging behind. And if there are other characters in here moving, they'd be moving at half speed. And you can further exaggerate this. Um, and then that electricity will really be lagging behind, which can give you some pretty cool effects as well. And if you were to do something like this, um, jumping that spawn rate up will leave more of a trail behind, which can give you a pretty cool look uh, to what you want. Kind of a note about my electricity. I have a few that are kind of curved like that, and maybe I should have put a couple more straight instead of curved. Uh, they're all kind of looking kind of similar, but that's just really how I drew them in there. So that's our final product. Again, there's a lot of ways that you can customize this as there is with uh, most Niagara effects. This can be used for a dash effect, or maybe you just want it to apply to your character or an enemy when they're being electrocuted, or maybe certain items or uh, maybe an electric fence or something. You can always customize the color, uh, change the texture, uh, draw it however you want. Maybe you don't want as many curved lines or maybe you want more realistic electric um, effects. So you can always change that. You can always use more sub Vs than just four and make sure in your sprite render section you uh, multiply by the correct uh, sub UV uh, factors there. So it can really... Uh, zone in on individual sub UVs. And then let's play this in real time again. So that's gonna do it for this episode. In this episode, we successfully created a custom electric effect and the Niagara system that can be applied to various elements in your project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. As always, happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.